All right, here we go. We are talking about the ideal gas law. Okay. Um, couple laws that do not appear on your formula sheet, but that can often be helpful for you are Boyle's law, which is a P1V1 equals P2V2. Again, it's not on the formula sheet, but if you have it memorized, sometimes it helps you out of tight spots. Charles's law, which um, relates temperature and volume together. So if the temperature goes up, the volume, or if the volume goes, yeah. So the temperature goes up, the volume goes up. If the temperature goes down, the volume goes down. Think about your tires in the winter. You know, temperatures get cold, the volume goes down of the gas. And then Avogadro's law relates moles and volume. As the moles of gas increase, the volume increases. All right, ideal gas law. There will be several problems on the test related to this. Okay, so the ideal gas law is PV equals an RT per nert. Um, it's used to relate pressure, volume, moles, temperature of a sample, and it has an R value that's constant at certain at given conditions and temperatures. Now, this is the ideal gas law. This is for gases that act ideal. No gas actually acts ideal. So if you get into college chem deeper or physics, you'll probably be dealing with a lot of deviations to this and how you work around those and what those calculations are. But luckily in here, for right now, we assume that all gases are ideal. We're going to talk in a couple days about some of the deviations and what would happen to these and why. And they're pretty um, logical. Like if you just kind of follow through with them with your brain, it, they make sense. Okay. And they take about 10 minutes for me to explain. All right. The R values on your test are as follows. You get two of them. So one of them is TOR. Um, so you would have to have your um, gas, your pressure units in TOR. That is the same as millimeters of mercury. You need to know that. And then um, they also have it when they are in, um, this is uh, kilopascals here. And then they have the one on there, yeah, right here um, for ATM. So these are the three R values that appear on the exam for you. No, no, they're on your formula sheet. So that blue periodic table formula sheet, they're on there. <clears throat> You just need to be able to find them and, and know which one to use when, when you need it. So always check your units and make sure that you're using the right R value and make sure that the things will cancel out. You can also use the ideal gas formula to solve for molar mass or density of a gas. So you can rearrange it for that. Dalton's law of partial pressure says that if we have a system and we have two different gases like in two different containers and then we put them together in the same container of the same volume at the same temperature that if we add those partial volumes together they'll equal a total amount okay the partial volumes of a gas equal the total gas volume does that make sense a plus b equals c yep. and you're going to be doing a lab tomorrow that entails that so you need to keep that in mind so as um, this is kind of a situation that you're going to be working with tomorrow, you're not actually heating anything, but you're going to be working with um, with a system here where you're capturing gas that's being evolved out of a flask, and then that's being, it displaces water within um, a graduated cylinder here. And then I'll explain that. I've got a whole write-up for you and everything. But the gas produced, um, the water is going to get displaced in an inverted vessel. We're not going to heat anything. We use Alka-Seltzer tablets. So when it hits the water, it starts producing gas right away. So there's no heating. And best of all, no goggles. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so method for, for obtaining this, and then you're going to see the volume of gas that's produced. Um, water vapor pressure tables are here. Um, <clears throat> so in, 
any given sample of water at a certain temperature, the pressure of the um, water vapor is given here in millimeters of mercury. And so if you know the temperature of water, you know the volume, I mean, sorry, the pressure of gas on that water in that sample based on temperature. All right, mold fraction, we've talked about those before. It's just part over the whole. So part over the whole. So if you have um, moles of gas and you have a whole sample of gas, the fraction would be the part divided by the total number of, of uh, moles of gas. So if we had three moles of oxygen and four moles of hydrogen, you, and you wanted to know the mold fraction of the oxygen, it would be three over seven. And then divide part over the whole. And you'll need to find um, find partial pressures. Then you can multiply the whole fraction by the total pressure of the system. And um, that'll give you the, the fraction of the pressure caused by that particular gas. All right. Getting into the math, y'all. Exciting times. All right. We have... Um, we have our calcium carbonate here. It's going to decompose to produce solid calcium oxide and CO2 gas. Sample of CO, um, calcium carbonate is placed in a rigid 35, milli, 35 liter uh, reaction vessel. And the key here that is rigid because that means that it's not gonna change its volume. Like a balloon is not rigid. So its volume is gonna increase the more gas you put in it, it's gonna increase the volume. Because the gas will take up as much space as it's allowed to. Because this one is rigid, it's only good, that gas will be 35 liters. Because it's gonna stretch as far and wide as it can go. Um, the vessel is heated then to 437 Celsius, at which time the pressure in the vessel is a constant 1 atm. They want to calculate the grams of calcium carbonate that react to form this gas. Okay. So first of all, we're going to use our PV equals nRT. And we're solving for grams. I don't have, as part of the PV equals nRT, I don't have grams. But I know that it's CO2. So how can I get grams at that point? What part of this am I going to be solving for? N. So I'm going to solve for moles, and then I can convert moles into grams by using the molar mass of CO2. Um, I think that's on your formula sheet. Oh, it doesn't matter. They don't care about that. But it is on the sheet here. Okay. So, yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, you can just use the 273. That's fine. All right. So, we're going to be solving for N. So, if I rearrange this equation and have N... Here, that means that it's going to be PV over RT. Did I lose anybody algebraically there? All right, we're going to find our information in our problem here. Our pressure is 1 atm. My volume, they told us, was 35 liters. Make sure that it is in liters. If it's in milliliters, you have to convert it to liters. And the reason is, is because of this R value here. So your, oh, your R value here, <clears throat> if you look at the units for it, And our pressure was an ATM. Okay, so we need to have the 0 0.08206. And that is 
ATM. This is acting up today. Leader. And then it kicks the other part mole. Calvin. So this right here, these are my units for my R value. Okay, you see that? It goes on the opposite side. This guy does. And then I have to multiply that by this, but what do I got to do to it first? Yeah, I got to add 273 to get that guy into Kelvin. So that makes him 710 Kelvin. All right. And now I'm going to cancel my units. My Kelvin is going to cancel. My ATM will cancel and my liters will cancel. So that leaves my units as what? Mole. And when I do that, um, so 35 divided by 8, 2, 6, 7, 10, I end up with 0 0.6, how many sig figs? Two sig figs? 0 0.60 uh, moles. And that's CO2. Now, I need to convert that, though. They wanted to know grams of CO2. So I've got to convert that into grams. And if I have, um, actually, you know what? This was, this is really moles of, I guess I should have, is really going to, yeah, this is really going to be moles of CaCO2. Three, okay, because that's going to tell us this that we would have had, right? Let me think about that. No, that is CO2. Yeah, it should be CaCO3. I don't like this question, I guess, looking at it a little closer. Yeah, but CaCO3 isn't a gas, so that's why I don't really like this question. Um, that's why I'm struggling with it. it. Yeah, it really is CaCO3, but you can't have that as a gas, so that's, that. yeah, I, uh, I'm not really liking this. Um, so... I probably need to throw that question out for next year. I apologize, guys. All right. So, but if we look at that, that's going to be the amount of this. And then we would do our mole ratio, right? So however many moles of this, we have the same number of moles of this, which is 0 0.60 moles CO2. And then... I know that for... Is it 44? 32 and 12, yeah, 44. One mole of CO2 is 44 Oh, I think I see. They're asking us grams of CaCO. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Lippy's being stupid. Lippy's being stupid. This is a fine question. It is fine. This would be moles of CO2 here. Okay. And now we're going to backtrack to get moles of this, which they're going to equal moles of that. So that's going to be 0 0.60 moles of this guy. Right? Because this is in a one-to-one -one ratio. All right. Sorry. It's been a Monday, you guys. I apologize. 60 moles of CaCO3, and now we want to know grams of CaCO3. Hmm. 
yeah, definitely a Monday. Yeah, it's just 60 because of sig figs with a period because you need two sig figs. All right, I'll be much sharper eighth hour. You guys want to come back for a repeat? Woo. Yeah, because you need two sig figs. This is two sig figs, so you need two sig figs in your answer. If you don't put the decimal here, then it would only be one sig fig. No, that's three sig figs. You can only have two sig figs because you only had two sig figs here. Six zero is one sig fig. Six zero decimal is two sig figs. That's because you weren't they weren't hammered into your head the whole year like well, I do my kids. Last year you like put a nail on the board. Mm -hmm. Yep. It was just I just kept pounding at it. Yeah. Well, that's the only way you can make this significant. So, um, z zeros at the end of a number where there's a decimal present are significant. So this is two sig figs. This is three sig figs, four sig figs. No, zeros at the end of the number where there's a decimal are significant. Zeros at the end of a number where there's a decimal are significant. Yeah, zeros at the beginning of a number are never significant. Ever, 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 ever. Whether there's a decimal or not, they're never significant. All right. On to one more fun problem. Let's see if I can do this one right. All right. We have a basketball. It's left out in the winter. Temperature is negative 2 Celsius. Go ahead and change that to Kelvin. That would be what? 271 Kelvin. It has a volume of 6.88 liters. It's a big ball. And the pressure inside the basketball is 0.795 ATM. How many moles of gas are in the basketball? And then what is the partial pressure of the oxygen in that basketball? And they've given you mole fractions over here. How do you find partial pressure? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to find the moles of the gas by using our PV equals NRT. Okay, so we're going to do that first, and then we're going to multiply it by the mole fraction to be able to get the partial pressure of the oxygen. Um, yeah, total pressure times the mole fraction, yep. The unit for the universal gas constant. Is it ATM, it's 
It's ATM liters over K moles. So this ends up staying with the number, and this part goes on the opposite side. ATML. A liter, yeah. ATM and then like a dot and liter. Yeah. No, they won't mark it wrong. Right, but it it oftentimes will save you in case you have made mistakes. Yeah. So it'll it'll spot those errors. So if you have something on the wrong line here, for example. If I did this and my temperature was on the wrong line, then it would end up squaring my temperature instead of instead of canceling it. And so then you would be like, oh, crap, I did something wrong because my answer should come out in moles. Yeah. So sometimes by making sure that you're having your units in place, it's it's kind of a good double check of your work to make sure that you've got your problem set up properly. So this ended up being 0 0.2346 moles, and that's moles of gas. Okay. And then if we do our mole fraction, if we take our um, volume, our, our pressure here, which is 0 0.795, ay, ay, ay. and I multiply that by my mole fraction. That's going to give me the pressure of that gas times 0.795 equals. So that ends up being 0 0.166, and that would be ATM, and that would be for your oxygen. Yeah. So they wanted... I, this right here is the answer to this first problem. And then they wanted to know the partial pressure of the oxygen here. So I took the pressure of the gas and I multiplied it by the mole fraction from up here. And then that gave me the pressure of the oxygen. Do you use the sig fig or do you use like the actual number to multiply by the mole fraction? I just keep everything in my well no I mean this is three sig figs times three sig figs so my answer should be three sig figs no you don't do either because you're not using that number for this problem Yeah. And this. No, I just mean like in general for like the first question. Well, whatever the fewest sig fig. So you had ATM, you had liters, and you had temperature. So these two, look at these two and this one and see how many sig figs you've got. Whatever the fewest sig figs are is what you need in your answer. Three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. Your answer needs to be three sig figs. Previous problem here, we had two sig figs, three sig figs. Okay, so my answer could only be two sig figs. What's the rule for the multiplier? Whatever the rule is for adding and subtracting, how many places? It's the place value, the least place value. So if you have like 2.0. Plus 5.00, your answer is going to be 7.0. All right, any other questions? A lot of this is just doing it. Yeah, you just got to practice, practice, practice. So. That's what we're going to do. Practice, practice, practice.